Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are in a trying season of life, I just want to offer some encouragement. Maybe you um, just recently had a new baby or you're going to have a new baby. Maybe you are moving or getting a new job or maybe you had a death in the family. I just want to use this as an opportunity to just offer some encouragement to you. Because whatever the situation is, these life changes can and will affect your homeschool in some way, shape, or form. So in our family, we have faced several of these situations, and I just want to share and encourage you that these are seasons in life, and these seasons pass and fade with time. You know, they may seem really overwhelming at the time while you're in the midst of them, but with some prayer and some patience and adjustment to your schedule, your routine, and your expectations, you can really navigate through these situations and successfully make it through them. So today what I wanna do is just offer some tips and just some general encouragement as to how we have navigated through some of these situations. Okay, and I'm actually gonna start with the like most drastic um, option or tip to um, share with you and that one is stop school just don't do it um, you know don't do the curriculum don't follow the lesson plans just truly stop press the pause button and free up that mental space in your mind you know we have we create this like to-do list of all these things that we need to do and schools always you know at the top of the list that's you know our job and part of our you know, things that we need to accomplish through the day. But when you're managing all of these other new things for a season, your brain just does not have enough space to take it all in. So if you can take one away, it is incredibly freeing as to how much mental space is just freeing up. You know, now I'm not saying, you know, don't, you know, check in with your kids or have them do anything. Of course, you know, like if you have, if you love to read aloud to your kids, by all means, like read aloud in the morning when you're all sitting together on the couch before you even really start your day. If you have your family devotional time or Bible time, do that with your family before you do anything else. You know, allow them to go and read silently in their room. Have them all pick out a book and just have, you know, 30 minutes where they're going to read silently to themselves. Also, they can be doing, you know, educational apps if you have some apps on an iPad or something like that. Or another option is just letting them watch some YouTube videos. There are tons of educational channels out there where you can flip on and have them watch some sort of educational. Call it a day. You know, when you've done that, it's a success. It's just for a season. It's not forever. But pushing pause sometimes can totally do the body and mind a good thing. Ultimately, you're wanting to choose things that are not going to require a lot of time from you or supervision from you or teaching from you. So if you can give them those things, it's freeing up your time. Ultimately, it is amazing how freeing you feel when you can take something off of your plate. And again, with this, just remember that this isn't forever. Right? It is just a temporary break, allowing you to get back into a routine, get your new normal underhand. You know, if you're introducing a new baby, get back into a new routine, and then you start everything back up. So just remember that this isn't forever. You're just kind of pushing pause. Now, this kind of leads into my second tip, and that is go through summer. Do not follow or feel like you have to follow a traditional school schedule where you start in September and you end in May. If something is happening to your schedule and you need to take a break in February or March, and that means you're gonna go a little bit into June and July, that's totally okay. When you take off those confines of feeling like I have to start here and end here, it can be really freeing when you realize we don't have to start and stop at a particular date and time. Okay, and that leads me to number three. So you don't, maybe you don't feel like you need to make super drastic measures like that. You're not actually gonna have to take off an entire chunk of time. You can manage something. So in this case, if you feel like you have a little bit of wiggle room in your mind and in your schedule, then just scale back. So instead of pushing pause and totally taking a break, scale back what you're doing. Maybe you're only gonna focus on the subjects that you really don't feel like your kid kiddo should take a break from. Or maybe they're just really into something and that's what you're gonna continue. Or, you know, oh, if we just can press on with this, then we'll be finished and we can focus on something else. 
really just take those extra things, you know, push them aside for a time and focus on really what's important for your family. If you are a big math family, maybe you're going to focus on math. If you're a big reading family, maybe that's what's going to take a precedent in your family, in your family. So you really get to choose what's going to be, you know, your core of what you're going to stick with and what you're going to kind of push to the side again, just for a time period until you get into a normal routine, until you feel like you can bring all those extras back into your normal school routine. All right, that brings me to number four. So if you're a type A person where you have to follow the lesson plans, you have to check off all the boxes, and you know you have something coming up on the horizon, you know there's gonna be a new baby, you know there's going to be a new move coming along, what you can do is actually take this into consideration and start planning in advance. So what I mean by this is start taking and doing things and doubling up. So maybe you want to do two math lessons on Monday and Wednesday, and you're going to do two language lessons on Tuesday and Thursday. And so over time, you're slowly, you know, working ahead, essentially, by doubling up your days, or maybe you're going to do a sum on a Saturday or on a Sunday. You know, you can do whatever works best for your family, but by working ahead, it will allow you to take that break into the future and not really feel like you're, you know, falling behind. And I mean, not behind in the sense that they're going to be behind with their kids, but maybe you just have a goal in mind as far as we want to finish by such and such date. And if we are going to have to take a month or two off for a new baby, then we're not going to be able to do that. So you just can work ahead prior to that break you want to take. And this could also work in the reverse. Like maybe something did happen unexpectedly. You take some time off. Okay, we'll just double up some days afterward and you will be caught up. All right, guys, the last thing that I have, number five, is really just some encouragement. And that is to just give yourself some grace and not feel guilty if you need to take a break from your homeschool. Regardless of whether or not it is due to some life circumstance or some unexpected event, or if just things aren't going well and you just need to take a break, that is okay. Do not let that mom guilt sneak into your mind. No, one thing with this is that your kids have plenty of time to finish. I don't know who came up with this idea that, you know, we've we've created these confines that like only learning can take place from, you know, September to May and only until you're 18. That's not the reality of how we learn, right? We are constantly learning. We're wanting to raise lifelong learners. And that doesn't mean that learning starts in September and ends in May and that we need to cram all of this information until we hit 18. And then at 18, you, you know it all and you don't need to continue learning anything. That's not the reality. So don't put those pressures on you and feeling like you have to accomplish everything in one academic year or, you know, on in a certain time frame, because if you don't finish something and you want to do it in the summer, that's okay. If you don't finish something and you're just going to pick it up in the next academic year, that's okay too. We have to remember that we're always learning and we just don't have to put those parameters on our learning. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful if you find yourself going through a tough season in your life, or maybe it is encouraging, but if you have found yourself in one of these situations and you have a tip to drop that below, please drop it in the comments so that, that, so that other people can see this and kind of glean from your wisdom and what you were able to do to help take the load off your shoulders and make it through that tough season as well. And as always, guys, have a blessed day.